Hi everyone, Slippery Slope here with your 11th Java tutorial. And if you're looking at what I have on the screen right now and you're thinking, what, what is this? Where am I? Some foreign planet? What's going on, man? Am I on Pluto, which isn't a planet anymore? Silly science. Um, well, then you're going to want to backtrack and look at some earlier Java tutorials. But in this one, we're going to make a really simple tax calculator. And we're going to get user input and you absolutely must import the scanner package slash class. If you don't, this ain't going to work. So here we go. Let's start. Yeah. Well, if we're going to get user input, we absolutely need to create a scanner variable and the associated objects absolutely have to be typed up. After that, well, shucks, we need to declare our variables. Without variables, what are we going to manipulate? What are we going to store? So yeah, well, we already do have a scanner variable, but we're going to create four double variables. And I'm going to type these up, and then I'm going to explain to this exactly what the heck they are. Non-TP. No, it's not non-toilet paper, you silly goose. It's non-tax price. And this second one is, of course, the tax rate. The third is the tax amount. And the fourth is the total after tax. So again, this is the regular price. This is what the tax rate, the percentage is. This is the amount that we actually pay in tax. And then we put it all together, the tax and the regular price and just exactly how much we pay. Now, if tax AMT looks a little funny to you, you can always add a little comment here and say, hey, tax amped means tax amount. And I know I didn't really say much about this before, but when you have variables of the same type, you can declare all of them on the same line. And if you want to, you can also initialize them on the same line. And you don't have to initialize all of them if you don't want to. For this uh, tutorial, we're not going to initialize any of that right now. But yeah, just an idea. Below that, we're going to ask our first question in order to get the ball rolling. Enter the price before tax. So basically we're asking, okay, what's the price of this thing before the government takes away all our precious dollars for nothing? Just kidding. Just kidding. I know our tax dollars go to good things. I'm sorry. I'm not going to make any political statements. <laughs> and the user is going to be asked to do something. So you know what this means. Our variable, the non-taxed price, equals input stuffs dot next double, which means the next number that, that the user types in, it's going to be a double, and uh, it's going to get stored. Next question. Very logical, don't you think? Enter the rate of taxation, or tax rate if you prefer. You don't have to type it up that way. And then, well, we want to store what they type in as a variable. So the next double, the next number, boom, that's our tax rate. And well, at that point, we would have the actual price and the rate of taxation. So from there, I mean, we can figure out exactly how much the thing's going to cost, right? So the tax amount would equal the non-tax price times the rate of taxation. And from there, indeed, you would have the actual amount that you would have to pay in tax for that product. Well, that's fine and dandy, but now we got to put it all together. Don't mind if I do. The total price would then be the non-taxed product price, da -da -da -da, non tax price, plus the tax amount. Simple addition. Awesome. You can probably guess what I'm going to do next, and that is I'm going to have this stuff display on the screen. So we'd have the tax, we would uh, say on the screen on console uh, what, how much uh, money would be paid in tax. It's not like we'd need to spit the tax rate back out. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but I mean, they're the one giving us the information. So hey, and then after that, we'd have the total. Let's run this and see what happens. Enter the price before tax. I'm going to say <laughs> uh, loop d loop loop lop loop Looney Tunes. 
See, that's what happens. When you don't give a number when obviously there should be a number, you get an exception. And in future tutorials, I'm going to explain to you guys what an exception is and how you can make your program look out for these things and take care of them. But for now, I mean, it's an obvious question here. It's like enter the price before tax and no one's going to write in $20. They're going to write in a number. And we're going to assume they don't type in the dollar sign. If it makes you feel better, you could add like a parenthesis in parentheses here, do not enter the dollar sign or the pound sign or whatever. So anyways, enter the price before tax, 30. Enter the rate of taxation. Well, in my county, it's 7%. So, the amount we pay in tax is $2.10. The total is $32.10. So, the only real thing that I'm going to go over uh, that I haven't really discussed yet in a future tutorial is you're going to want the format of these numbers right here to look like real dollars and cents. You're going to want a dollar sign and you're going to want uh, there to be two spaces format because, I mean, usually, like, let me type this up here. You want a price that's like two dollars and thirteen cents or whatever, and don't worry about that now. It's not necessary for now. Just let's just go with the bare necessities. If you've ever watched that, I believe it's the Jungle Book, you know what I'm getting at there. So one last time, you import the scanner class because if you don't, well, you can't get user input. We have our class header, a squiggly line, or method header, a squiggly line. We create the input stuffs. And uh, yeah, we need the system.in, we need the scanner without the new object, then hey, we got nothing there. Where are we going to store them data in procedures? Here we declare our variables, uh, the remaining variables that we need, all four of them, and we're going to store them as a double. If we absolutely wanted to, we could say store them as a float, uh, which would save some space um, under the price before tax, and then on TP. We could turn that to a float if we wanted to. Enter the rate of taxation, yet another question. We could turn that into a float. We do our simple math here to get the tax amount. We do our simple math here to get the total. And then we print out the tax total and the real total to the screen. And yeah, let's run this one more time now that we change the floats. Enter the price, 21. Enter the rate of taxation, 0.00. .00. Tax is zero, total is 21.0. All right, guys, if uh, you have any questions, anything like that, feel free to leave a comment. And if you like what you see here, feel free to subscribe. Thanks, guys. You rock. Peace.